if you are following the market close enough, you're watching extreme volatility. But ask the question, who the hell is pouring in a 50 million, a 50 million, a 50 million, another 50 million. So whales are getting involved in last 24 hours. Why the hell would they do this? The questions which we, the normal retail, would ask is getting answered. Ether was a weak asset in the recent past. We argued it's going to come down to 2150 and it kind of did. Now watch what it is doing. And this is the signal. If you're on a three-day, if you're on a daily, whichever chart you belong to, it's okay. Look at this. On a daily, the price is going down, RSI is going up. You have a bullish divergence in Ether. Now, this bullish divergence is being developed on what platform? A long-term trend line resistance. And what did we really want it to see here? We wanted to look for a double bottom signal, a higher low double bottom, whatever the market would give us, right? Whether it's a textbook pattern or something like we are watching. So the only thing in between us and the next big rally is a breakout here. And that's not $4,000. That's just a breakout from 2600 range. If you see this asset going back about 2600, Hundred and closing on a daily, well, that's all that you need as a signal because the market would not knock on your doors saying, yeah, I'm about to do this. Welcome to the Scientific Investor Family where the normal retail guys get to learn how to become the next top 10% of this world with the most educated charts which you can get in this market whether you want to be there for a long time or you want a specific asset all of these are available for you in the link below now if you're in the market right now and you're looking at a lot of different assets you are kind of confused don't be wait for bitcoin to show you the reversal wait for ether to confirm that reversal and that's almost it. You can now start riding the assets which are trending higher. If you look for the volume, it's going to give you some story. If you look at the price action, it's going to clarify that story. Why is that happening? Now, if you are a new guy in the market and you need help to do something like that, use the link in the description below. SI family is there for you. Now, let's get rolling. If you are looking at XRP here, we haven't done anything special yet. The price has dropped just like we wanted. Now the price is below this trend line. What would we look for? Getting a retest and a rejection would be the perfect scenario because that would validate this as a trend line as well. Let's put that into a dark line. That works better. Now, going back up to test this trend line, as well as the trend line resistance would give you more certainty that, yeah, the rejection would cause the price to come back down to the macro level. Now, if you are using a three-day chart, what would be that macro level? Because depending on your horizon, the targets change. And if you are looking at least on a medium term, then what you are focusing on is, yeah, the price can come down to 0.4, but we all understand the fact that this kind of support has not been there for a long period of time. So previously, we had similar resistance for sure, but this as a base in XRP, which is 0.49, we breached it a couple of times, but as you can see, we went back up immediately. So below that, it seems like we have enormous buying power. So there is no supply. No one is selling in that region. But people want to buy when the price is that low. So that's whales in the market. Now, let's ask the question. We're watching whales entering the market. 
Which direction are they going to? Are they coming into XRP? Are they going into Ether? Are they going into Bitcoin? We'll have to break them down. But now if you look at this, the daily volume, the buying volume, it didn't change much. The price action followed the volume. There is no divergence. Now if you go look at Ether, you put it on a daily chart. Now the daily shows you, huh, we had comparatively higher daily trading volume than XRP compared to the previous volatile day. And still the price is slow. So yes, on a macro you are about to reverse, but on a micro you may start moving up only after doing this phase, which means a retest of 2100, 2150, that kind of a choppy move. Now, go back to Bitcoin. Daily Bitcoin kind of goes in hand in hand with XRP. You don't have that much buying volume and the price is kind of choppy. Now, we cannot trust this guy. You look at this, what you're watching in front of you is an inverted hammer. Historically speaking, inverted hammers showed you a bounce is coming up. But most recently, you just saw that as a fake out. So the whales in here, they are trying everything possible. Because remember, it's not once. If you go back in the recent past, you are looking at all these inverted hammer and saying, huh, each time the price bounced, but just this time, it did not. It came down. So now you'll have to zoom in. You'll have to check, okay, what the hell is really happening? What are they trying to hide from us? And what are they really doing? And that question comes in here, which kind of gives you the argument. They're trying to push it down. The one, the two, the three. That is heavily possible. Don't forget the fact that this range has been visited once and some supply would still be there which means yeah the price can go that low it's not a surprise but keep in mind we need to reach there for what we need to reach there to assure that this pattern the macro is relevant and you can take it on a three day you can take it on a daily it's okay but what matters is this trend line should break at one point. Whether you retest the absolute bottom here and bounce off, or you start finding support right at this point and bounce off, it doesn't matter. Getting a breakout from this range is more important. That's the only way you can come up to 69. Now, what are the odds on a macro? Right? You plot this trend line and you're like, okay, we, we may do this, man. We may do this, right? We can come down to this point. Ether came that low. Bitcoin did not. So it's already showing you there is some kind of variation in the market between the Bitcoin side of the equation and the altcoin market. That's where you jump into the Bitcoin dominant side of the equation. You'd like to get clarity. And you're like, yeah, I, I understand that. Bitcoin dominance is slowing down. It's slowing down at a resistance, not only for the short term, but also on a macro horizon. You're zooming out last 5, 10, 15 years, and you're agreeing, huh, that's a resistance I should be watching. And if the price is getting rejected right at that point, it's good. But, yeah, I know, buts, ifs, it's hard. But if you don't break this 56 now that's a trouble. But if you do, now your supports are here at the bottom. That's the first one. Then you have the next one, which is the macro. All of these would signal something big in altcoin coming in. You're watching all this money getting poured into the crypto market. Ask the question, which direction are they really going? Are they jumping in just to the Bitcoin? Are they participating in other assets? And Basically, you don't need a lot of other tools. Just look at the volume. You look at the daily trading volume for top assets. First 100, the next 100, whichever you want. But then look for the price action. When that amount of money is coming in, is the price trending higher or is the price trending lower? You'll have to pick the individual chart. Say, for example, we take one here. 
people, all that you have to do is put that chart at least on a daily and see if you follow a trend. And if you do, that's a good news. That's a great news because in such markets, getting to see something following a trend is great. Now you can identify where to buy and where to sell. This is kind of easy. Now say you don't know a lot of price action. You just use a Hekinashi. Is it red? Is it green? Once it's green, you jump in. Or once it's green above the moving average, a 21-day moving average on a three-day, you jump in. That's good. Now maybe it's a small, right? It's okay. But if you don't want volatility or to watch that trade for next three, four weeks or at least you know a few months, yeah, this is what you should be using. You use a weekly, a breakout, then you follow it until it goes to the next level of resistance. So these are like the fake outs. It's hard to pick on a weekly, but when you go on a daily, the number of trades you take increases. Watch how the price action follows or use a Ranko. Follow the trend. If the price is showing you green, you go in. If it's showing you red, you wait or you short. But remember, shorting is messy. Especially when you're watching dollar doing this. That's crazy, guys. Dollar has been going down, 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 down. But now think about this. Even though dollar was going down, you're watching some of the biggest nations, at least in terms of population, giving you the idea, yeah, it's not gaining value against dollar, rather it's getting depreciated. Even though dollar is going down, this guy is still going low against dollar, which shows you, if you're in these, ah, you got trouble, guys, you got trouble. Yeah, you're in crypto, that's highly volatile. If you don't want volatility, you jump into gold, you jump into silver. But again, watch for what the price action is showing you. Gold showing us this can be a great opportunity. Maybe it's about to revisit this. Perfect. Fine. Last time we saw something like this, we got a huge opportunity to buy there. And then it started, boom, the one, two, three, the micro one, two, three. Whichever segment you belong to, whether you are a commodity-based guy or a crypto-based guy, in your portfolio, if you have both, identify what allocation rate should be there for gold. Identify what should it be for crypto. Some of us are heavy in crypto. 70, 80, 90% in crypto. That means you have to go through extreme volatility because your risk is based on the market as well. Now, if you look at this trend line in gold and you're like, whoa, if gold needs to come down here, maybe it's going to go for a ride and then come down. And that ride will include drops like this. You would see 10% drop in gold. And that's not a small equation. This is exactly what we are talking about. You will watch these and then the price go back up. After which it would be choppy. It would come back down. There will be a lot of different equations. This is where you participate in crypto if your wealth is different. Meaning, for those who just want to preserve the wealth, they participate in gold. Those who want to make the wealth, they go through extreme volatility in the crypto market to gain that. Sometimes you're watching the market breaking through these and then showing you a bullish divergence. And you go into the payment space, the small cap, and you're looking at this and saying, ah, we're not getting a breakout. Yeah, you still have to wait. That's the extreme level of volatility which crypto is bringing you. Now, understand the structure and it's going to be a little bit easier on your emotions. The one, the two, the three. This is not the textbook structure, but you can see how the price action is kind of following this trend. So if you are not the wave guy, what you are arguing here is... You are watching the one, the two, and historically speaking, you get a three. Maybe that's the next one, two, three signal. But that's coming. We'll have to wait and see how big it is. But let's participate in that. If you received value, smash that like button for me. And if you want to get into the SI family, to get all of these charts at the right time, 
Use the link in the description below. Make sure you're well prepared for this market cycle. I'll meet you guys on the next video. Bye for now.